Hello, I'm James and I'm a Dyson engineer here within the robot team. Today I'd like to talk to you about our latest robot vacuum cleaner, the Dyson 360 Heurist, and a really exciting new feature, which we call zoning. With zoning, the robot can map your home, and you can then split up that map yourself into zones or rooms. And then once you split up that map, you can then assign one of three power modes to each one of those zones to customise how you want to clean your own home. So now let's look at zoning in a bit more detail. First of all, to access this feature, you need to connect your robot to a Dyson Link app. The first step is to allow your robot to map your home. To do this, the robot needs to be on the dock and you can start mapping from the app. Before you start mapping, it's also best to prepare your home. So open any internal doors so that the robot can get into all the rooms of your house. It's also good to tidy up any obstacles that are lining around your home. So for example, toys, cables, books, etc. However, if the robot does get stuck on something whilst mapping, you can simply remove whatever the robot is stuck on and it will continue to map when you press the button on the robot. When the robot is mapping your home, it will follow the same cleaning navigation pattern as it would when it's normally cleaning. Except it will also turn the brush bar and the vacuum off. This means it uses less power, so it means it can cover larger homes to generate a full map of your house. You can also map multiple floors of your house. This is really handy if you have a home with two or three floors. When mapping, you do need to start your robot from the dock. Once you've completed mapping, you can then manage your zones in the Dyson Link app. When you open up the map, you can rotate the map to suit your point of view. So for example, I like to orientate myself around the dock location, which you can see on the map. Once you've completed that, it's time to split the map up into zones. So doing this is easy. You can drop down lines or thresholds to split this map up. We find most people tend to do this by rooms. So they split it into the living room, kitchen, etc. But really, it's completely customizable. You can do it however you wish. You can then also choose a name for each one of your rooms. Again, we've got a small list there of some common room names, but you can also customise this entirely for your own home. So once you've completed zoning, the next step is to assign a power mode to each one of those zones. In fact, there's three power modes which you can choose from. Each of one delivers a different depth of clean. So for example, in my home, in the hallway, I'm going to assign that to be in max power mode. This is because a lot of people come and go in that room, potentially with shoes on, so I really want the robot to deliver the deepest clean in the hallway. But then in my living room, I only want a quick daily maintenance top-up clean in that room. So I'm just going to assign that room to be in quiet mode. And as you can see on the Dyson Link app, when you're adjusting these modes, the robot estimates how long that cleaning time will take. This is because different power modes use different amount of energy. So for example, if I did my entire home in max mode, you could see the estimated cleaning time would be longer. This is because the robot has to go back to the dock to charge more often. Once you've completed zoning, you can then either start a clean instantly or schedule a regular clean using the Dyson Link app. When the robot starts to clean, it will come off the dock and do a special manoeuvre to help it discover which zone it is in. And then you'll see on the app that it will say which zone it's in and it will start to clean using the power mode which you have selected. That's all for today. If you'd like to see more information about your robot, please go to the Using My Robot section in the Dyson Link app. Thank you very much.